Hey, it's Jared. In this video, we're gonna build your own links page just like a Linktree page. So we're building our own Linktree page because we wanna have more control over it. I don't necessarily wanna pay for a subscription when I have a great tool like Elementor in my WordPress website. And I also wanna send all of that web traffic to my own website rather than sending it to somebody else's domain, helping them build domain authority. Now, it's uh, a toss up as to whether or not using your own web address in your social media profiles helps with SEO or any of that stuff. But for me, I would rather have it there than not have it there. And since I have Elementor, I would rather build my own links page than use some sort of a tool, even though tools like Linktree are very convenient convenient and easy to use, I'm going to have more control over what I put on my page without having to pay subscription fees if I just build it within my own website. Let me jump in here real quick to let you know about my free Elementor course. It's a getting started course, so if you are wanting to know more about how to create websites and dynamic pages with Elementor, get my course for free. The link is down in the description below. So what you're looking at right here is the page that I created. You could actually go to my Instagram, which is at Jared Hill, and the link is gonna be there, and you can, you can see my links page and interact with it and see how it works for yourself. But we're gonna look at building one today. And the easiest way to do that is, of course, to have WordPress and have Elementor installed already. So that's a prerequisite. You're not going to need Elementor Pro for what we're doing here, but it would help because Elementor Pro gives you some additional features. So if you don't have Elementor Pro, use the link down in the description below to grab it. So I'm going to click on New, uh, under New, and go to Page, and we're going to create a new page. Now, your website probably has styling and all sorts of other stuff, headers and footers and whatnot implemented. We don't necessarily want those on this links page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over here to Templates, and instead of Default Template, or even Elementor Full Width, I'm gonna choose Elementor Canvas. And Elementor Canvas is gonna give me a blank canvas, hence the name, and I'm not gonna have headers or footers or anything there. I then will wanna give this a title, so we'll call it Links Page. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Publish so it saves that information. And then I'm gonna click Edit in Elementor, and it's gonna take us into Elementor so we can start to create, or Elementor. I know it's Elementor, but I keep saying Elementor for some reason. So you can see we have our blank canvas here. We need to create a first section, so we're gonna create a main section here, which you can see is very tiny up at the top. I'm gonna to make sure I'm on that section by clicking these six little dots. I'm gonna go under Advanced, and I'm gonna add padding to this. I don't necessarily want padding on the sides, so I'm going to unlink this and just delete the right and the left padding so that we don't have any padding on the sides, but we do have padding at the top and the bottom. The reason that we're adding padding is so that when we're on a mobile device, whatever content is up at the top of the page or even at the bottom of the page is not pressed all the way against up the top or the bottom of the page. So now that we have that selected, let's go and choose a background. Under Style and Normal, Background Type, we'll click on Classic, but there's also Gradient, Video, and Slideshow as well. But we're going to keep this simple just by going under Classic, and we could either choose a color. So I could grab the color picker and choose a color or manually type in a color value, uh, or I can add an image. I want to add an image, so I'm going to grab uh, this image of this uh, city background, the skyline here, and hit Insert and you can kind of see it back there. I want the position of that to be centered, so the center of the image is what I'm looking at. Even if I was on a smaller device, I wanna make sure I'm getting the center, and then of course, as the device gets larger or taller, uh, it will spread that out. I want the repeat to be set to no repeat, and the size set to cover. And so cover means it's going to cover the entire area that is visible. So now that we've done that, we'll go to Layout, and under Layout, we're going to go to Height and Minimum Height. Minimum Height needs to be set to 100, and it needs to be set to VH for Vertical Height. Now, you can see by typing in the number first and then clicking VH, it didn't do anything because this uh, is, I don't know, a little bug or something like that, but if I type in 100 again, then I get full height, which is what I want. 
full width or vertical width is already happening because we have it set to cover and because of the canvas page type template that we're using, it's full width. So we don't have to worry about full width. There's also the option of going fit to screen, which is not going to work. Essentially what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow it to conform to the size of the image to fit the screen and we don't want that. It actually wouldn't go full height. So we want vertical height for that. I'm also going to set a maximum container width. The container width is the maximum width of the columns that will be inside of, uh, and rows that will be inside here. So I wanna set that to 700 because I don't want it to go full width. 700 is more than wide enough for a smartphone and I do want the buttons and everything to go pretty much full width on a smartphone. But if viewing on a desktop or a bigger tablet or something like that, I want everything to be kind of in the middle and not do these awkwardly long buttons going all the way out towards the edges. So now that we have all of that set, I want to put my image, a photo of me at the top. A photo of me at the top of this uh, page is going to help people recognize that they made it to the right place. So I'll drag that in. I'll click on image. I'll scroll down, grab a little thumbnail image of myself, and I'm gonna change the size to thumbnail 150 by 150 because I don't want it to be too large. Now I'm gonna put a heading in there just so that I can uh, welcome everybody to the page. On my page, I just put my handle, which is at Jared Hill, which is pretty much my handle everywhere, but I could say something like welcome or you know anything I could put in there, and then I'll hit center to center it. Now the default text color that it's pulling in from the styling of the rest of my site is not going to work for this. I'm gonna choose just plain white as the color, but you, you're probably noticing that the white color washes out into the background of my image a bit. So I need to make a little change to my background. Let's go back to that background section and under style, we'll go down to background overlay. Background overlay, I'm gonna choose the classic type and then I'm going to choose color and we'll just leave color at black, which is good. But you can see it's it's pretty dark. It's The opacity is 0.5, maybe uh, a little bit too much. I could go to 0.3. I can go all the way to uh, 1 or 100, which would block it out completely. But I think I like 0.3. And so I'm going to land right on 0.3, which allows me to see that text pretty well. Now, for this text, if I click back into that text section, I also have the ability to add some shadowing to the text. So I can click here and uh, underneath text shadow, maybe add uh, a little bit of text shadowing as well. I could click on the color. I could change the, um, the opacity of that by adjusting the alpha channel here a little bit. And I think that looks good. That's starting to look good. So I have my image, I have a welcome message as the title, and now I wanna throw in my first button. Now the buttons are gonna pull in with your default site styling as well. And so you can see here, I've got this light blue with dark text, and as I mouse over it, it rounds the edges and the text turns white, but it's this little pill-shaped button over here on the left. Now I could center that, but I want it to go full width on that section. So I'll click Justify it instead, and it actually stretches that button out to the 700 pixel width of that section. This is why we wanted to set 700 pixels as that width, which you can adjust to any number that you want. I just chose 700. I think 700 looks pretty good. So now that I've got that button created, I can add a link to it. So we'll go ahead and just add a link to it there. And then in this section, I'll give it a name. We've got one button placed. Now you can right click and, uh, and duplicate the button because you've made some styling to it. You wouldn't want to go to the menu and, uh, and drag out a whole nother button like this and drop it into place and then have to restyle it again. Not that that took too long. It's much easier to duplicate, especially if you do a bunch of styling to the button. So I'll add in another link here and, um, I'll just uh, link this one to my shop. Now we might wanna add some social links. So I'll go back to the elements and search for social icons, drag social icons in. We'll add those to the bottom. Now they kind of stick out because they're, they're the default social media colors. 
So under style, if you choose custom, you can give a default color to all of these. And so I might want to go with like a, um, with a gray that it doesn't blend so much with the background, but is kind of like the same as the background color. Um, I want to change the shape. So I'll go back under content and change that to circle. And then under style again, I'm going to go ahead and make those 18 pixels just to make them a little bit smaller. Underneath the content tab here, you would click under each of these and modify the link to go to your social media account. You have to put the full URL in for this. So uh, by default, it's got Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, but you can add item, click on the icon area here, and under all icons, do a search for anything else. So perhaps like I wanted to put LinkedIn, I could just start to type that in, hit insert, and then add the URL to my LinkedIn profile. And you can add a bunch of these. And so I recommend that being kind of like the section that sends people to your other social media accounts. Because maybe somebody was on your page and they're thinking like, oh, I didn't know that they're on TikTok or I didn't know they had a YouTube channel. Very easy to get people to jump around to different sections. Now, what's cool about doing this in Elementor is, or Elementor, there's tons of different elements that we could throw into our website. And that, makes things much more dynamic than just a couple of links. For example, if this website of yours has all of your blog posts or all of your articles, I could simply drag in this posts section and have my most recent one or two posts show up in the link section uh, of this page, which is gonna be great. We're gonna be directing traffic to this page. So we wanna give them an idea of all the different things that we have that uh, we wanna be able to share with them. Some of those might be buttons to other sites. Some of them may be utilizing uh, Elementor elements to direct people to different uh, bits of information on our website. So if you have El Elementor Pro, you have these additional items in here, for example, posts or putting like an image portfolio or gallery in there, um, adding in some pricing information about products that you offer, something like that. Uh, if you have even uh, other tools like essential add-ons from Elementor, you can add a Google map, uh, you can add um, documents, I mean, all sorts of different things, calendar forms, uh, d communication forms, all sorts of stuff that you can add to this page that some of those things are features of tools like Linktree, but many of them are not. And this all, of course, gives you the control and power that your website has with Elementor installed. So this is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and save this and just preview what our page looks like. So we'll go ahead and close, just close out of Elementor here. You can see I've got my different pages. We'll just click on view links page and boom, there it is. And I'll also go ahead and pull it up on mobile and you can see it looks pretty good. I mean, uh, we've got things pretty well centered. They're a little low on the page for some reason. So I might go in and look at my settings a little bit here and see why all of my information is so much lower. It looks like it should be up a little bit higher, but it's probably just likely a setting that I didn't get completely right here. Um, and I'll go back and review those and make adjustments as needed. But this is a really nice page that I just created here in a few minutes and it didn't cost me any extra money. It's through my own website. It's directing people to my website as opposed to something else like a Linktree page. And I think that's great. So if this video helped you create what you were looking for, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you could be notified when I put out more videos. Thanks a lot.